to make this two parter. So we'll just so we have some more time. So we'll we'll probably do, you know, whatever ten through um, six or five, and then do because the, the top. I mean, where we're going, the top four. You could probably spend, you know, a couple minutes on each, especially the top four. Don't you think? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm trying to fit it with whatever you give me. Right. Right. Okay. So we're we'll come back with eight and eight. Mm -hmm. Eight and seven at least and see where we are, okay? All right. Okay. Part two and three, two, one. And our guest is Dr. Roger McCohen. We are going through his top 10 list of uh, actions that took place in 2020. And this is going to, you know, boy, there's a lot of stuff going on. So we're actually going to extend this on another week as well just to get everything in because we want to make sure there's plenty of time. So when we took the break. I think we're now up to uh, number eight. Yeah, Ken. Number eight, I have a, an important case out of the federal district court in the District of Columbia that occurred just after Thanksgiving uh, in 2020, and it's called the telematch case. And what it involves is the question of um, how much of the data that a farmer shares with USDA, say for purposes of participating in federal farm programs, how much of that's actually available to public inspection under a Freedom of Information Act request. And we had an important decision that protected a lot of that data. USDA um, had a request to release this to this company known as Telematch, and they refused to release a lot of the data. And uh, the reason they did so is because they said, well, it's private to, in, in certain respects because it identifies particular farmers and farm locations and by number it, locate, it, it identifies them. And there are some exceptions to FOIA requests, and if it would be an invasion of privacy, USDA does not have to release those records. And, and the court upheld the USDA's refusal in this instance, uh, saying they properly withheld customer numbers from disclosure because it would have been an invasion of personal privacy. Uh, so you have to fit within one of those exemptions, and they did in this instance. That case is on appeal, so we'll see that one in 2021. Well, these are all big, so uh, what about number seven? Well, seven uh, deals with the Natural Resource Conservation Service. In 2020, they came up with a final rule on the conservation provisions of the 1985 Farm Bill. And in that, they explained how they will um, tweak their procedures for identifying wetlands, known as the delineation process, and how they uh, determine those and certify those on land. Uh, because that's an issue of whether you're eligible or ineligible for USDA farm program benefits. They also dealt with the issue of best drain condition. And I take some issue with actually what they were saying here. I'm not sure that they're actually complying with a federal court opinion uh, back uh, a little over 20 years ago uh, in a case coming out of the Eighth Circuit in, in 1999. I, I still don't think they are complying with that, but uh, delineations and determining what best drain condition is because the landowner is entitled to that, uh, the historic drainage on their property. So that's a big one uh, in terms of regulatory aspects and the ability to participate in farm programs. Those rules are very important. Okay, before we wrap up this segment, let's uh, do number six. Six uh, is what I call a, a, dormer, a, a, a dormant commerce clause case. It's a Ninth Circuit opinion involving the National Animal Meat Institute. Uh, what this deals with is, is a problem that California has been giving us for about the past decade. And that is California has got this uh, uh, proposition initiative referendum process out there. Uh, and sometimes they get some silly things. And uh, what they've had over the past few years uh, through that process are rules that say if you want to sell ag products such as eggs, poultry, veal cuts uh, in our, to our consumers in California, then you have to raise them in the way that we want you to raise them. You've got to raise the chickens in certain size cages, so forth and so on. Um, so you're, to get access to their market, they're dictating the manner of the agricultural practices in Iowa or Missouri or Kansas or wherever. And there was a challenge to that under the Dormant Commerce Clause saying, well, you can't do that. You can't basically tell us how we're going to regulate our own industry in our state. That's our business. 
Uh, the Ninth Circuit upheld them, Ken. Uh, they said that that's not a dormant commerce clause violation. Uh, those cases uh, continue, so that's going to be an issue that's still going to be there in 2021. That's a big one. And you may recall a number of years ago, there was an attempt in, to put language in the Farm Bill that would block a state from doing something like that, but it never made it through. We're talking with Dr. Roger McCohen, and we're going to hold him over for next week's program as we talk about his top 10 list of uh, developments, agriculture, when it comes from the legal uh, standpoint. So uh, stay with us. Roger McCohen will be back with us next week. So uh, we'll have more in just, just a moment. <laughs> 